Hello, today I would like to show you my recent purchase from the AliExpress. I was looking for a long time to get a automatic transfer switch for my project, but this is a very expensive device and on the AliExpress you can get it for a extremely good price, so for a personal project this is a great way to go. I was searching for a video about this unit and the only one that I, I watched was a guy who was opening this unit and he was saying that this is a piece of junk. He was unable to make it running and I, I checked what's inside on the video and it was looking pretty decent to me. So I decided to order this unit. What's the main idea of the automatic transfer switch? It's going to connect your load, your device that you would like to power and allow to automatically switch to independent power supply lines. They are, they came with a different size with a different number of contacts. This unit is for a one phase system. So we've got a one life and one neutral. If you are using a three line phase system, we are going to have a four contacts. We've got phase one, phase two, phase three and the neutral, the ground, the earth, we are never going to break from the safety reason. And right now I've got similar device that I build myself. And you can make it by using just a big relay that is called a contactor. But the relay have one big problem. It have to be energized all the time and if you go with the higher amp, the coil needs to be uh, bigger, the magnetic field needs to be stronger to keep the separation. They have to be uh, more tension on the spring to break a contact with a uh, high current in case the contacts get welded. Then it starts to making a lot of power and a lot of money that you are going to waste. And this is the answer, because this device have a motor. This is a motor and the motor is going to make the switch and then turn it off. And it's not going to take any, any current except of a very small relay that is going to do a logic. But you are not going to energize a big contactor coil all the time and they are limit switches that are going to know that the switch turn in the one direction or the another and turn it off. So this is how it looks like. On the one side and on the second side you've got something that looks like a fuse, like a circuit breaker, but this is actually a isolating switch that is designed to be mounted on a DIN rail. And this is exactly what's, what you can see here. You've got a mimic of a DIN rail and you've got these two isolating switches connected. And there is a mechanical, mechanical piece of a, a wire of a steel rod that, let me go to the manual and it's going to interlock these two isolating switches so they can be only one of them can be enabled and if I rotate it right now you can hear that click and there is a uh, this rod that switch one off and then second one is off if I'm going to reverse this then they are going to one is going to be enabled, the other one is going to be broken. So very simple mechanical interlock 
and that's all. So let's take a look how this looks. We've got a normal power that's going to be our utility power input. Here we've got a emergency power, the reserve. And in my case, this is an inverter in my goal zero. And I'm just fitting it here. On the bottom, we've got output from our two isolating switches. And I forgot to tell you what's the main uh, reason for this unit. This is going to prevent backfeeding the inverter power into a grid or your other isolated power system. We never don't want to your generator inverter feeding power back because if someone would do a repair on the line, he might get electrocuted. So this is exactly why this is very important to have a good unit that is making a good breaking of the of the power and prevent any backfeeding because you might kill someone and by the way i'm doing this it might look a little bit sketchy but everything is safe i'm using the isolating transformer for the main input it looks sketchy but it's not and they are two isolating switches that have outputs here and here they just go straight like this like this like this but because of the interlock they never going to be connected together so if i grab a multimeter and if i try to measure the one line and the another line we are not seeing any and the connection and if I measure here we also do not see any connection but on the bottom they are connected they are connected by me and as you can see we've got a good connection and it's done by using these wires so the neutral go to neutral the face to the face and from any point or on the different connection board you are going to connect your load which in my case is just a bulb and i've got it connected here but it can be connected here or in the middle on any break connection here we've got output for your logic that is going to just you are going to i'm going to show you this is a logic for another devices that you can do a controlling we can connect a relay and do any other things that need to be done like alerting you or switching on or off a generator if you are using this with a, a inverter or a gas generator then by flipping that logic because that's going to be energized if a mains is present so if you reverse the logic by the relay that have a two state you can enable something if the power goes down and start your generator or uh, inverter from battery so this is how it looks like here we've got our main ac input here is our backup inverter here is our load First, I'm going to switch the normal AC, and here we've got the manual and the automatic. On the manual, you can turn it like you want, but as soon as we go to the automatic, it's going to respond automatically, and the primary will be always your utility power, your normal. So I'm going to connect it, and we are going to energize the normal power. And you are going to see the motor turning the knob and making a connection. Let's take a look. And as you can see, we've got our load working. Here we can see that we've got a normal utility power. I'm not sure if you can see that is blinking, but on the camera, 
I can see, but in normal case, I can see my, my naked eye being uh, solid. And the secondary power, which is our backup, as you can see, do not glow. And here is our logic. If we grab a multimeter on that logic board, we can see that we've got a 230 volts and we can use a relay to do any other stuff. I'm going to energize uh, our second backup power. I'm going to hit on. And as you can see, we've got our backup power but nothing happened and that's because the primary is our normal power and now i'm going to kill our normal power just imagine yourself that we've got a power outage and it automatically go to the backup source and switch the bulb i'm going to energize the normal power and let's take a look for a short break between the switching. You can see. That's when it breaks. And as you can see, as soon the power go, here we can see the backup power is being used. And if I measure, this is not a through RMS, that's why it have this lower voltage, but effectively that is uh, exactly to 30 volts. And we can do other logic. So this is how it looks like. It's working perfect. It's doing exactly, exactly what we need. And looks like it's doing it very good. So for the price, it's absolutely I go for and I don't know what else I can tell you it's working perfect doing exactly what it needs to be done it's working perfect so thank you very much for watching see you next time and bye bye